digging into the esoteric doctrine. I've not been doing this. The ministry is 32 years old. I was doing it before the ministry started. And, it has, and, and all of my research has led us to the third level of communication with God. We are standing in the Holy of Holies, hoping to ascend to the highest point of the Holy of Holies and be joined to or unified with the Supernal Mother, which will seal off our back and in Lurian doctrine, stop the, shell, the shells, I think we call them the shells, from sucking on us, sucking our energy out of us, and we will be filled up with the power of God alone, and we will be priests of the Melchizedekian order. Well, we are priests now, but we're, we're young priests. We're not fully established yet. And we will become the, the visage of the Lord Jesus Christ in the world today. Now remember, when that happens, he's not going after the Satanists. He's going after the, the human beings who are housing members of his body. The first step is to gather together the fullness of his body. So our numbers are very small right now. As he becomes stronger in us, he will be waking up the other members of his body. Now, the other members of his body that are sleeping, sleeping spiritually does not mean, uncon does not mean unconscious. Sleeping means that they're in another dimension of who they really are. And my example always is Captain Picard falling unconscious, being hit by an asteroid and being unconscious on the floor of the Enterprise. He was completely unconscious on the floor of the Enterprise, but he was conscious in another dimension. And he spent a whole lifetime in that other dimension. He got married, he had children, he had grandchildren. And then he finally woke up on the floor of the Enterprise and he had only been unconscious for three or four minutes. So. The primordial kings, which are the root of the second Adam that materialized in national Israel. What does that mean? It means that when Abraham, when Jehovah made his covenant with Abraham, he promised him a son. Okay. And that son materialized in human, that materialized and was revealed through human form in national Israel for the first time. First of all, Abraham received the seed, the seed went to Isaac, the seed went to Jacob, and the seed, I've told you already, it was divided. The seed, there, the mass, the energy mass of the seed was so great, it was distributed primarily to three out of the twelve sons of Israel. Okay, uh, Levi received the priesthood, Jacob received the government or the monarchy, and Joseph received the seed of righteousness. Okay. So all three of those seeds were gathered together uh, into uh, into a, and, and, and were gathered together and, and, and labeled the covenant of peace that Jehovah made with Phineas and his seed, the covenant of peace, meaning that Phineas and his seed were destined to be joined to Melchizedek, the high priest of this new covenant. Okay, this new covenant. And it's interesting because Phineas was the son of the high, of the Aaronic high priest Eliezer. So the the covenant was made with the which would be the descendant of or the successor of the Levitical priesthood. Jehovah made a covenant. Listen, Jehovah made a covenant with the successor of the Levitical priesthood. In other words, the Levitical priesthood was coming to an end. Why was the Levitical priesthood coming to an end? because it had not produced immortality. Although it had the, the potential to produce immortality, it did not produce immortality because the, the Levite priests were struggling to overcome their fallen nature and they would die before they overcame it. The, the Levitical priests died before they successfully overcame their fallen nature. So therefore, Jehovah instituted a new priesthood, a new a priesthood in which he took responsibility not only for providing the immortality, but for assisting and bringing to pass the, well, uh, he took responsibility for the priests overcoming their sin nature, helping the priests to overcome their sin nature so that Jehovah's desire to impart immortality to Israel would come to pass. Because with the Levitical priesthood, Jehovah did his part he made immortality, eternal life and immortality possible 
the Levitical priests attain the eternal life, quality, quality life for the people, but they did not attain immortality because they did not overcome their sin nature. So in the New Covenant, when Jehovah said to Phineas, the successor of the Levitical priesthood, okay, I know you're not going to make it as a Levitical priest. Why? Because all of the success, all of the all of the five priests before you, starting with Aaron, died before they entered into immortality. And there's no way the people of Israel can attain immortality if the high priest does not have immortality. Because the high priest is the mediator between the people of Israel and, and God. So therefore, there has to be a new priestly order and a new immortal high priest. And you, Phineas, I've chosen you, the descendant of Aaron, you and your seed, okay, will be the recipients of the new priesthood. In other words, the covenant was made with the soul that was inside of Phineas. The soul that's inside of you, Phineas, will reincarnate, will transmigrate into another priesthood. It will be the same soul. You were faithful, Levite priests, but you couldn't do it. You were faithful enough for me to transfer your souls into a new priesthood, which will be revealed through the tribe of Judah, in which I will take responsibility for making immortality available to you, and I will also manifest an immortal high priest so that Israel has the potential to actually enter into immortality. The same, the same soul, the soul that was in Israel, okay? And that's hard to understand, but you need to try to understand it. The soul is Adam. The soul is Adam. Righteous Adam, materialized in this world as the nation of Israel. In that dispensation, in the dispensation of the first covenant, which came to an end when their temple burned down. What well, you see today is Talmudism. It's not biblical. It's not, it's not, not the biblical Israelite relationship with Jehovah. Okay. The biblical Israelite relationship with Jehovah today, in this incarnation, the same souls that were incarnate in national Israel, incarnate today, are incarnate in many people without any particular concern about nationality, color, or sex. The same souls coming forth in women as well as men, in white, black, green, yellow, and orange, and the identifying mark of the Israelite today okay, is that he desires God. And God is the name of God today is Jesus, and he is drawn to the Spirit of God. The true Israelite is an Israelite in his heart, not in his flesh. Okay, so the same Levite, the, the, the Adam was divided into 12 tribes. The incarnate Adam, okay, in national Israel, the many-membered creation of God was divided into 12 tribes. Those same souls are incarnate today, but you can't identify them. You can't identify them by the way they look. And there's no external temple. You can only identify them spiritually. And the church is not into identifying them because they don't have the knowledge or the wherewithal to do it. Only, okay, only the primordial king can recognize the Melchizedek, the Melchizedekian priest, of which the Lord Jesus Christ is the high priest. So right now, today, we don't have any full-fledged Melchizedekian priest. The high priest is all set in place. The Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. The high priest of the new order, the Melchizedekian order of priests, and an order of immortal high priests. So, the one high priest is immortal, and his job today is to raise up a priesthood in the flesh of immortal priests. That's what he's doing now. And that's what I told you earlier. Please open that door. Thank you. That the next step that we're waiting for is for the Lord Jesus Christ to appear permanently in the flesh of at least one person to start with, to start with. That after that, he is going about doing what is necessary, primarily approaching the church, but there may be a lot of primordial kings that are not in the church. 
He will go about in the earth. We said Jesus, the scripture says Jesus went about doing good. We will be doing good works, but primarily, his primary function will be to wake up the sleeping primordial kings and raise up the fullness of the Melchizedekian priesthood. There were a whole tribe of Levite priests. There are many of us that are coming. See? That's his primary function in the earth. When he first stands up in the earth, he's not standing up in the earth yet. The sign that he is standing up in the earth will be an immortal person to start with. Well, maybe he's going to start with 10 of us. I don't know. Immortal priest is in, we are an immortal, we are to be an immortal priesthood. Same soul, okay? Same 12 tribes of Israel, but in different host bodies, born into different cultures, and no longer uh, identified by their physical national assignment. It's going to be quite a challenge. We can only recognize each other by the Spirit. We need to recognize Christ, the promised Son, in other people. And it's possible that Christ, the promised Son, is in other people and not shining through them because he's sleeping. And when he first wakes up, the first Adam is fighting with him to reveal himself through that person. So it's going to be quite a challenge, but that's where we are today, brethren. And. Uh, it's very exciting. I don't know how I got into this topic. I was talking. I don't even know how I did it. I don't know how I did it. Okay. So, I, I'm just just to finish off because it's late. Just to finish off with this message. Okay. I was telling you that I could never challenge this man because I don't have his I don't have his um, Bible school education. I have not chosen. Well, that's not really true. I've just followed the Lord Jesus, and he's taught me what he's taught me. I don't have all of that knowledge. I would like to have it. I don't have time to study it, because this is all that I study. The Lord leads me. I study what he tells me. And the purpose of my studies is that he should mature in me. He should mature in me and all of you who are following me until we ascend to the place where the supernal mother joins with us. And he crosses over. Okay. We, the bride in us, Christ in us, has to go up, and then he's go up to marry the bridegroom, and then he's coming down to dwell in us permanently and bring forth his offspring in us. Okay, brethren, it's 20 after 5. Are there any questions or comments, anything you'd like to hear? I hope that you were edified today and that you weren't too disappointed that there was not um, a deeper message. But we have to do what the Lord tells us, and we have to be prepared we have to be prepared to meet the church, at least to know what's out there. Mm -hmm. See, we're not about to meet a man like this, a Bible scholar like that. We're going to meet the people sitting in his audience. Mm -hmm. you know, the chances of converting a man like that are very small. Yes, did you want to say something? I did have a comment. I did look him up because I was curious to see what sort of education he had. Yes. He did have a lot of seminary education, but he actually died a couple years ago. Did he really? December 2017, he was dead. Oh, he's dead? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Did he say how old he was when he died? 78. Oh, he lived a nice life then. Well, there you go, brethren. So he left this, um, he left this legacy behind him that the Lord is moving to counter. Why did not the Lord counter it sooner? He may not have had someone in the earth Christ was not appearing in a human being to the level that could have encountered this. This, this ref refutation of what he's teaching is coming from the holy of holies. You see, in order to refute a doctrine, you have to have a higher doctrine. So the doctrine that is being taught here is in the third grade, the holy of holies, okay, the innermost place. And we just, I believe we just stepped into this location a few weeks ago, personally. That's what I believe. So the Lord didn't waste any time. As soon as we got up here, he's moving to counteract that in the spirit. Not through a carnal debate, but in the spirit. Okay. So that's where we are. And this was a part of our assignment. Sometimes we learn and we're instructed here, but today we had an assignment. And I believe that we satisfied the assignment.
who was moving to rescue all of the people that are the victims of that, which, again, this is not personal, but it is the fruit of extreme arrogance to move on like that, out of the mind of man. See? Praise the Lord. Okay, God bless you all, brother. If you'd like to stay by for your comments for today's message.